There is a place in southwest Wisconsin where rolling hills of green meet blue skies filled with dancing clouds of fluffy white. where occasional craggy towers of rock burst forth from the landscape. Here, gentle breezes whistle through the pines, instilling souls with feelings of harmony and peace. The place is Wyoming Valley in Spring Green, Wisconsin, and this breathtaking land of natural wonders is filled with the magic that dreams are made of. Back in the early 1940s, Wisconsin native Alex Jordan was drawn to the curious outcropping in the valley called Deer Shelter Rock. Scrambling to her summit, he realized at once that this lofty haven was where he should build himself a retreat, a place where he could sculpt and create. Jordan's imaginative mind held the only blueprint and his restless spirit and strong physique were what saw the project to its fruition. He began construction of his country retreat by carrying the needed stone and mortar in baskets on his back. And as a result, Jordan became the architect of his own dream. An early interpretation of Alex Jordan and his dream of the house on the rock still echoes off its granite walls. Off its granite walls. When I have a house, as I sometimes may, I'll suit my dream in every way. It won't be correct or in period style, but, oh, I've thought for a long, long while, of all the corners and all the nooks, of all the bookshelves and all the books. And there were the shadows fall I've planned to have a magnificent concert grand with polished wood and ivory keys for wild, discordant rhapsodies. I will have a window seat broad and deep where I can sprawl to read or sleep. One long thin room will hang in space and at the end there will be a place for a kindly saint as a figurehead to turn away the thin heights dread. And so began the house on the rock, the first of many great dreams to spill forth from the mind of Alex Jordan and become reality. Join us as we learn a little more about the man behind the dreams and for a look inside this one-of-a-kind house. With each new day, Jordan was inspired with visions to create and ultimately expanded the house into a whirlwind of dreams come true. Now and forever, the house on the rock is guaranteed to instill in you a sense of awe and wonder. Still standing high atop the 60-foot chimney called Deer Shelter Rock is where you'll find the original structure of the house on the rock, its canted windows, a unique feature of the strikingly innovative and contemporary design. Upon entering this architectural marvel, you are at once overwhelmed by its uniqueness. The flow of the rooms resembles that of a maze, as the contour of their rocky mantle was Jordan's only blueprint. At every turn, your gaze falls upon a display more unique than the one before. Slab slanted floors and carpeted walls are supports for objects of oriental art. Stone fireplaces of unheard of proportions cover entire walls. There are five in all in this original structure alone. Since it was first built in the early 1940s, the House on the Rock has been subject to perpetual change. 
I think the biggest change that's occurred there in the House is the fact that in the early 70s, Alex really became genuinely interested in the stained glass lampshade collection he acquired from Bob Bauer and John Coble from Galesburg, Michigan. And of course, to have those really show up, Alex covered all of the windows in the house with a sapphire or cobalt blue plexiglass over which he put Shashimo and hand carved from India. And that, of course, just allowed people to really enjoy the panorama. But as always, Alex Jordan had a vision. And in 1984, he added a room which afforded people the most spectacular view of the valley they could ever hope for. The infinity room projects decidedly toward an adjacent outcropping called Percussion Rock. The infinity room is so named because it creates the illusion that it stretches to forever. The entire room is 218 feet long. It's cantilevered out 141 feet, anchored with 105 yards of concrete as ballast, and it has 3,264 windows in it. So when you look through the table at the end of it, you're looking down 15 stories, 156 feet to the bottom of the valley. From the beginning, the attention of visitors is drawn to the incredible amounts of objects that combine to create the mind-boggling, inspiring, intriguing effect that is the House on the Rock. It was said that Alex Jordan desired to give the curiosity seekers who bought a ticket an experience they could not acquire anywhere else in the world. And indeed, this is what he ultimately achieved because Alex Jordan was not just a collector. He was a collector of collections. Room after countless room was added to the house on the rock as display boxes for the intricate, the large and unusual, the loud and thundering, the bright and colorful, and the always amazing, all inspired, of course, by Alex Jordan. Well, in candid conversations that I enjoyed with him, he readily admitted that he was not a typical workaday personality and really did have in the conventional job market a hard time maintaining a conventional job. And I don't think he was here very long before he realized he had a creative spirit. Many of the rooms in the House on the Rock contain the never-before-seen or imagined. But some of the exhibits jog memories and are like a step back in time. The life the times of days gone by have all been resurrected on Alex Jordan's Streets of Yesterday. Authentic reproductions of shops, offices, municipal buildings and homes are yours to peek in and remember or to study and learn what life was like in the early 1900s. You can almost hear the whirring and chiming of the many antique timepieces in Lorenzo's clock shop. Or the many rumors changing hands in the barber shop with the authentic big red barber's chair. There's a reward offered for anyone who's seen the criminals posted in the sheriff's office. and a peek inside J.P. Richmond's import shop, 
reveals countless dazzling antique treasures of the fragile and expensive kind. The atmosphere of the streets of yesterday is warm and friendly, and one can't help but begin to tap their toes to the jolly tune that rolls down this memory lane. The colossal gladiator calliope and music machine. Another dream come true for creator Alex Jordan. As his first animated, automated music machine, its delightful cacophony of sounds flowed throughout the hallowed halls of the House on the Rock and into the hearts of every enchanted visitor. People loved it so much, in fact, that Jordan was inspired to create and display the world's greatest collection of these magical musical wonders. I remember Alex telling me that the Blue Room was always his favorite machine. And I think that is because it was his first real attempt to free the machine, uh, I should say the music instruments, in that are normally confined in the parameters of a music box. So that, I think, was why Alex liked it so very much, because it was free, it was unique, it was different, it was an innovation. Joseph, a 27-foot vision of musical artistic genius from the mind of Alex Jordan. Resounding syncopation echoes from this beautifully handcrafted music machine crowned in rich gold ornamentation. the most elegant is the waltz king of the collection, the Blue Danube. This marvelous music machine was 15 years in the making. Its rich orchestrated sound a perfect match for its stunning beauty. Another of Jordan's crowning achievements is the Mikado. Once an ornate Strauss organ, this music machine has become an incredible showcase for his love of that which is oriental. A distinct oriental flavor is present throughout the entire complex of the House on the Rock. Jordan acquired what is said to be one of the finest collections of exquisitely carved ivories in the world. It is easy to see why Jordan, who thrived on creating the impossible or unthinkable, 
could be so enthralled by the intricacies of Chinese artistry. Where did Alex Jordan acquire his tastes? And where did his bizarre and fanciful ideas come from? From everywhere. Uh, from music, from just sounds. He was a vast reader, of course. He had a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, magazines. He was an omnivore. He ate everything. He uh, read everything. He listened to everything. There never was enough of anything. I think that's true. Alex actually subscribed 38 periodicals at the time of his death. And there wasn't any topic or any subject I ever opened or discussed with Alex that he wasn't knowledgeable on to some extent. Of course, it was all self-education because his formal education actually ended with high school. That is the largest carousel in the history of carousels. It's actually 80 feet in diameter. It is so heavy, it weighs 36 tons, that it rides on 18 eight-ply truck tires to distribute the 36 tons. It's 35 feet tall, has over 20,000 lights on it, and 269 carousel animals, not one of which is a horse. I think he thought the carousel was his best. Uh, he put his greatest effort into it. And I think it is his best work. Um, he liked it best. He never bought one of anything. Um, the chandeliers on the carousel started by buying one. And he bought, bought them out by the hundreds. He never bought one of them. It was always multiples. Alex used to love to watch the people, and he'd move throughout the crowd. And whenever Alex would do a new creation, he would give it his 10-minute test. And if he wasn't getting a real wow reaction from the people, he would change and recreate the creation because he said, it's no good. But the carousel is good, a true world wonder. It's odd that you'll not find one horse on Jordan's miracle carousel. Almost as strange as the whole wall full of them in another part of this delightful room. Stranger still is the demonic figurehead which serves as an exit from the carousel room leading to yet another unforgettable adventure. Experience the organ room. A monumental, dramatic, extraordinary experience is yours to be had in the organ room. The low, loud, pious yet ominous sounding moans of thousands of towering organ pipes swirl past, through, and over a myriad of marvels.
it's impossible to take it all in in 100 glances, let alone just one. And yet the entire scope of this incredible room was another brainchild of world-famous dreamer Alex Jordan. The organ room, he knew exactly what that was going to look like when it was finished, before it was ever started. And he had that vision, you know, he knew and told people in detail, we're going to have this, it's going to have this, and it does. It has everything that he originally stated, and it was all in his head. He had plans, but they were all in his head. Only the mind of Alex Jordan could imagine an organ council with 15 keyboards. Or a shining copper configuration of drums and kettles standing tall as a tree. and a 45-foot-high wooden perpetual motion clock. He was more P.T. Barnum than he was anyone. Alex was an entertainer. That's what he did. Uh, for a living. That's what he did with his life. Uh, he was not an artist or a sculptor, a musician, wh whatever. Alex was an entertainer. He would tell you that. Alex Jordan agreed. Circus elephants would be appropriate in this room. A configuration of seven life-sized elephants stacked in pyramid fashion seems to suit his style. But the room holds something even larger and more incredible. A life-sized, fully automated 80-piece orchestra adds a decidedly rich sound to the pleasant atmosphere of the room. This astounding ensemble took 14 people three years to create. It encompasses 37 miles of wiring, 31 blowers, and 2,300 pneumatic motors. Look closely. Recognize anyone? He, he always wore hush puppies, but sometimes he'd have two different colored ones on, and you might comment to Alex about that. Say, you've got two different colored shoes on, and he would say, you know what? I got another pair at home just like that. And that was his nature. He really did some things, I think sometimes for the fun of it, to see if we, the staff, were astute enough to, to notice them. Some of his things were rather subtle, but it was fun to call them to his attention. The response was always different each time. Yes, there was a childlike side to Jordan, one that made it possible for him to tap into all areas of interest. The dollhouse room is one result of that quality of Jordan's multifaceted personality. Here, visitors are afforded a peek inside the warm interiors of more than 250 one-of-a-kind doll houses. Most were constructed on a precision scale of one inch equaling one foot. Built in authentic period architecture, each is lovingly furnished down to the tiniest detail. And who couldn't love these apple-cheeked sweethearts with complexions of ivory? Jordan's collection contains hundreds of beautiful bisque dolls.
collections. Upon collections. Upon collections. Many are especially impressed with the Grand Gun Collection at the House on the Rock. Pistols, rifles, and more. Even some Jordan originals. This stunning crown jewel collection creates an atmosphere of grandeur. Exact replicas of the Tower of London's crown jewels are featured, as are replicas of the Royal Tiara collection. Spectacular! Even the very astute marvel at the artistry used to recreate these symbols of British royalty. In the Heritage of the Sea building, you'll see an entire maritime collection with memorabilia of previous missions and men that sailed the world over. And replicas of sailing vessels and ships that have done battle with both man and the sea. The room is filled with the colorful sounds of the Octopus's Garden music machine. It's located in the center of the room, just below the immense exhibit that was just near completion at the time of Jordan's death in 1989. His last hurrah. Everything was bigger with Alex. Uh, the sea creature, it, that started out as 100 feet, and then the figure jumped to 145 feet because the Statue of Liberty is 141 feet, and this would be four feet longer than the Statue of Liberty is tall. When it was finished, when it finally got to the framing structure, it's 200 feet long. The building it's in is 67 feet high. Some of the employees thought that Alex was insane. Um, you know that he, you know, was, where does he come up with this stuff? You know, and that's that's a good question. Where does he come up with some of the the ideas that he had? And a lot of people never knew. He often said, "It doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to be bad. It just has to be." Each springtime, the House on the Rock bursts to life for three seasons of adventure, spring, summer, and fall.
A bazaar of 18 individual specialty shops is set amid these blooming displays. Delicious homemade candies are made right on the complex. If cascading falls of chocolate aren't enough to tempt the taste buds, free samples of fudge will surely do the trick. And don't forget, an exclusive assortment of House on the Rock souvenirs and mementos are available at both the main gift shop and the one called Uniquely Ours. Because it's so easy to spend a whole day at the House in the Rock, a variety of eateries are scattered throughout the complex, ranging from an outdoor grill, to a succulent buffet, to pizza, tacos, and sandwiches, and a variety of other snacks. During the months of November and December, visitors to the House in the Rock are treated to a holiday collection, featuring over 5,000 Santas. They belong to Karen Donaldson, wife of owner Art Donaldson. She now displays them for everyone to enjoy. As the owner of the House on the Rock, I want to carry on the Alex Jordan tradition. And Alex was the greatest creator that I have ever known. 